Okay, in this uh, section we're going to be uh, introducing the logarithm functions. Recall the exponential functions are one to one. Uh, they have an inverse. And the domain of the exponential function is negative infinity to infinity. The range is zero to infinity. All right, so here we go. If you have the exponential function, b to the x, this first line says b to the zero equals one. So on the inverse function, we're going to call that inverse function log base b of x, this says log base b of one equals zero. On the exponential function, b to the one is b, so when you switch the coordinates, this says log base b of b equals one. If b to the two equals b squared, log base b of b squared equals two. If b to the x is b to the x, then the log base b of b to the x equals x. And going the other way is true too, look. If, uh, if you give the log base b function x, it gives you log base b of x, of course. So when you switch that back to the inverse, which is the exponential, this, this would have to say b to the log base b of x gives you x. In general, if a goes to c on the exponential function, c goes to a on the log base b function. And that's exactly what this says. b to the a equals c means the same thing as log base b of c equals a. So we take this as the definition of log logarithm uh, functions, and what, what it really says is every exponential equation can be written as a log logarithmic equation and vice versa. The key idea here is, let, let, let's say you wanted to solve for the exponent a on the exponential function. When you, when you write it as a logarithm equation, you can solve for a. Well, we're going to come back to that idea later. Anyway, all the, all the properties that I've mentioned can be summarized right, right here. Of course, the, the, the domain of the logarithm function is the range of the exponential, and the range of the logarithm function is the domain of the exponential, and these, these properties here are the ones that I stated when, when we looked at the, um, at the table. Okay, a word on notation here. There's infinitely many uh, log, logarithm functions. For each exponential function, there's a corresponding log, logarithmic function. If, if the exponential function is 2 to the x, the inverse, the log function would be log base 2 of x. If the exponential function is 5 to the x, the inverse would be log base 5 of x. Exponential being 10 to the x, the inverse would be log base 10 of x, but we generally don't write the 10, so it would just be log of x. That, that means log base 10. Most importantly, if the exponential function is e to the x, the inverse is written like, like, like this. This is log base e of x, but we write it as ln of x, which means the natural log of x. Uh, so if the exponential function is e to the x, the inverse function would be natural log of x. So what, what does that mean? That means that if e to the 0 is 1, the natural log of 1 is 0. If e to the 1 is e, the natural log of e is 1. If e to the 2 is e squared, the natural log of e squared is 2. If you give the exponential function x, it gives you e to the x. That means that the natural log of e to the x is x. Similarly, if you give the nat natural log function x, it gives you the natural log of x. That means that e to the natural log of x has to be x. In general, if a goes to c on e to the x, then c goes to a on the nat natural log of x, which means if e to the a is c, then c, then natural log of c equals a, which is what this says, natural log of c is a. And uh, all those properties that we just mentioned are summarized here. Okay, one of the first things you really have to get com comfortable with is the basic definition of the log logarithm function. Remember, every exponential equation can be written as a logarithmic e equation, and vice versa. So get, get, get comfortable just going back and forth on this. So for example, if you're given the exponential equation 5 to the x equals 3, think of star as being the x, b as being the 5, and triangle as being the 3. You'd have star, which would be the x, equals log base b. Notice the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the exponent of triangle, which is 3. So get used to this, because this is really important. This is a log equation, which we can write in exponential form. This would be 2 to the third equals 8. This exponential equation, e to the 3m equals 4, could be written as 3m equals the natural log of 4. Re recall, b is e, so we don't write log base e, we write ln. Okay, this um, log e equation, 
5, or y equals log base 10 of 5, remember star is y, b is 10, and triangle is 5. So it would be written as 10 to the y equals 5. This exponential equation, uh, the base is e, star is 7, triangle is 3x, could be written as ln of 3x equals 7, or you could also say 7 equals ln of 3x. Okay, see if you can do, do these uh, do these four on your own. Do these these two here and these two here. Four equals x could be written as e to the x equals four. Uh, log base log base ten of y equals r could be written as ten to the r equals y. Now coming back here, two to the r equals m could be written as log base two of m is r. E to the fifth equals x plus two could be written as five equals natural log of x plus two. Okay, you can actually go Okay, actually, okay, you can actually go one step further with that basic definition of log logarithm and uh Okay, you can actually go one step further uh, with the definition of logarithm and solve some exponential and log e equations. See this one right here? You're not ready to use the definition of logarithm yet. You first have to divide by 2. Now, when you, when you take this exponential equation and write it as a logarithmic equation, you get ln of 5 equals x minus 3. So when you solve for x, x equals ln of 5 plus 3. Over here, I think you can go right to the definition of log logarithm here. You'd get x to the third equals 5, and take the cube root, you get this. Okay, well, why don't you try these two? Hit the pause button, see if you can do these two on your own. Okay, in the first one, did you divide by 3? Did you divide by 2 first? Then use the definition of logarithm. You should have gotten e to the third is x minus 1, so x equals e to the third plus 1. On the second one, you subtract 7, and use the definition of logarithm to get x equals log base 2 of 5. Okay, the last thing I want to do is show you how you can use these two properties to simplify some expressions involving logarithms. The first property says, if you have a logarithm with a base that's the same as the base of the exponent, then it simplifies down to just the exp exponent. The second one says, if you have a base that's, this, that's raised to a power of a logarithm that's, this, that's the same base, then the answer is just x. It's the thing you're taking the logarithm of. But I like to think of these two rules as saying almost the same thing. When you look at a function composed with its inverse function, you just get x, you see? You're, you're, you're taking f inverse of f of x here and getting x. Here you're taking f of f inverse of x and getting x. So that's, that's how I like to look at it. Anyway, the first rule I think you'll find more helpful than the second one. What we're trying to do here is trying to write 32 as 2 to a power. If we can do that, then the answer is just going to be the power, right? Well, 32 is 2 to the fifth, so log base 2 of 2 to the fifth is 5. Second one's a little harder. Um, we want to write 2 as 4 to a power. Well, isn't 2 equal to the square root of 4, which is 4 to the 1 half? So you can think of this as log base 4 of 2 is the same as log base 4 of 4 to the 1 half. The answer is 1 half. Sneaky. This one uh, is a little, even, a little sneakier. We're trying to write 8 as 4 to a power. If we could do that, then the answer would just be the power. Well, we know 8 is 2 to the third, but isn't 2 4 to the 1 half? So you can literally replace 2 with 4 to the 1 half. Now what you would do here is multiply the exponents. You get 4 to the 3 halves. So we have log base 4 of 4 to the 3 halves. The answer is 3 halves. This last one isn't too bad. 5 to the log base 5 of 12. That's the second property. That's just 12. Anyway, well, let me give you something to try. Go ahead, hit the pause button, and try these four. OK, let's do, let's do the second two first. We're trying to write 1 eighth as 4 to a power. So first, let's write 1 eighth as 2 to the negative third, but then 2 is 4 to the 1 half, right, like we saw earlier. So when you multiply these exponents, we've got log base 4 of 4 to the negative 3 halves. The answer is negative 3 halves. e to the ln of 5, well, this is e to the log base e of 5. That's the second property. That's just equal to, to 5. This one, this is log base e of e squared, which is just 2. And the last one, log base 10 of 1 1,000th, think of 1 1,000th as 10 to the negative 3, log base 10 of 10 to the negative 3 is negative 3, that's the answer. Alright, we gotta go, bye bye.